CBS Sports College Football Studio analyst, but more importantly, a musician, a songwriter, oh, a yeah. singer-songwriter. It's been a long time I since know. I've been here to, with song. Well, we were told that you weren't allowed to play your guitar anymore. I was with... un, uh, I was not allowed, but in, in this last... But I created you. I understand, and that was exactly the pitch I gave to the brass at CBS. I'm and they Colonel said... Tom Parker, and you're Elvis. <laughs> Well, with apologies to Elvis and anybody who is affiliated with Elvis, but uh, and also to Colonel Tom Parker. But uh, no, they said, you know what, you can do it. You oh, good. Can go ahead. Okay. So, well, so thank you, thank you, CBS. We we appreciate, we appreciate that. that. In uh, ten minutes, he'll have his uh, DP show related song. Uh, he joins us, courtesy Continental Tire Coach's Corner. Let me start uh, with the hit last night, Trevathan on right. Devonte Adams. You have targeting in college football and the use of replay. Why have targeting or the potential for a targeting call and no replay in the NFL? Well, I, they with 45 active players, they don't want to be eliminating one of their best players from the game, so they just throw a 15-yard penalty. But as the game con comes under more scrutiny with more stuff on CTE and so forth, I think that move will be made. I think ultimately they'll borrow from the college uh, rule and change it. There needs to be some still tweaks to the college rule. It's, it only impacts defensive players. You never see a running back uh, get called for it when he puts his head down and creates the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. But, uh, and when people are trying to get to a line of scrimmage, a first down or something, and diving and where heads naturally are going to collide, that probably should be eliminated from the call. But uh, safety has got to be a paramount importance. I mean, it has to be because of uh, we got to get young kids to want to play again. Knowing what you know now, your, your kids played, would right. you have them play if they, were, if they were younger? You know, Dan, I was always of the mind when they're that age, no one's running fast enough to get hurt anyway. You know, they just kind of big, you know, Michelin men kind yeah. of running into each other, right? Yep. And, and uh, so I always thought it was safe. But now that these studies are coming back, and, 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 and truthfully, the coaches at that youth age, didn't know enough to not do the helmet to helmet stuff. You know, we used to have the board drills and what they call the Oklahoma drill where people get on either side of a board and try to drive the other guy off. Well, that contact starts with head. Low man wins, right? Yeah. So that had to be changed. That And I think it is getting changed. But if I were king for a day, I would say no one needs to wear pads till they get to high school. And I can tell you, I really believe that you do not need to practice in pads to play a great game of football. I mean, tackling may suffer, blocking may suffer, but it would suffer across the board, and we would get rid of the chronic part of CTE. You wouldn't be hitting all the time. Would you have your kids play football? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You learn great lessons from football, and, and uh, you can get hurt in lots of different ways and riding a bike. But, uh, yeah, I, I think football is a wonderful game. I think it's and, and the great thing about it, especially at youth ages, every body type can play. You know, you, you, not everybody gets to play hoops. Not everybody gets to play baseball. But in, in, uh, in football, regardless of your coordination, regardless of your body type, you can be on a team and get all the lessons that come from being a teammate. Explain to the audience, you were a quarterback whisperer. You studied it. You played it. You look at Mitchell Trubisky right. and, and where he is with the team. You, now, what are you waiting for? What are you trying to prevent him from experiencing? The school of thought, I think, is that you don't want to damage his psyche, right? You don't want to put him in there before he's ready to go. And it is a quantum leap from college football as it's played with the RPOs and, and all that's going on. Although you saw him creeping in last night, that touchdown pass, Aaron Rodgers' first touchdown pass was clearly an RPO, probably should have been flagged. But uh, you want him to be completely ready so that his confidence isn't damaged when he gets out there and sees this myriad of coverages and myriad of blitzes and, and, and uh, finds himself in harm's way. That being said, uh, I think now that you've invested this much in him, uh, I think a Mitchell Trubisky can benefit by getting in there. And I think the Bears organization can benefit, in particular John Fox can benefit, because now you can give John Fox a pass because they're, they're bringing along a young quarterback. When you go and spend a $15 million or whatever the number was on Mike Lennon, assuming that you did all the research and all the evaluation, and then he goes and throws balls over guys' heads like it's going out of style last night, the organization looks bad, so I think we're going to see Trubisky. But with Jared Goff, did the Rams do the right thing? I didn't think they had the right head coach for Jared Goff. Now you do. Moreover, and, and you know I was a Goff guy. We talked about yeah. this when Goff and Wentz were in, in the marketplace. Um, moreover, what they did right is they got only one voice. What was going on with the Rams when Goff got there, there were about five different guys in his ear. 
you know, whether it was Winky or or the head coach or whomever, they were all telling him something else, trying to, you know, well, this is what that meant. Here was the language at Cal. Here's the language now with the Rams. Here's what this means. And five different guys, hey, I, I think you should be doing this. When you have too many voices in a quarterback's ear, he doesn't know who to follow, who to not trust. So he goes back to, I'm going to do it the way I do it. Mm -hmm. And that can be a disaster. Well, Fisher's not an offensive-minded head coach. Right. Now you bring in McVay, who is. Right. You bring in some weapons for him. Get the offensive. I mean, this is no secret. If you have that much talent, I got to have a good offensive line. Do I have any weapons? And I got an offensive-minded head coach, so we're seeing progress and, here. And what else can help? And I think Mike Shanahan did this with RG3 when he was a rookie with the Redskins. You bring a little bit of what he did in college. Bring a little bit and bring a little bit of that language. Everybody's so hell-bent on saying, hey, we've got to call it every word in, in this play call. Well, they did that with Cam Newton in Carolina, exactly. too. Exactly. Get And look at the numbers yeah. he produced as a rookie. If you give him some comfort zone where all of a sudden I know what I'm doing rather than I'm wondering what I'm doing, uh, a guy can blossom. Trubisky was an excellent player in, in college as an accurate passer. He was an 84% passer before he got the starting job. I, I go, I don't care if you're throwing against air. If you're 84%. You're pretty good, okay? And and then, obviously, he blossomed, and you started looking at the athlete uh, that he was in, when he got to the combine. I mean, he goes all the way up the charts to number two. I, I think you can get Trubisky uh, some seasoning now, and I think the organization will feel better about the future. But I look at the quarterbacking position, and we were all in on Kaepernick and RG3, Cam. Yeah. And then so, something happens. Something happens where you sit there and say, well, and, and I've got two theories on it. One, obviously, the NFL's faster in terms of its defense. People ask all the, all the time, how do people not get open? Oh, they get open. They just don't <laughs> stay open. <laughs> those guys, yeah. those rascals on the other side can, get, can, get, can close ground. Uh, and so you take some hits. But if you're doing the zone read and you're getting outside, as we saw Kaepernick enjoy success with the Niners, that, that's risk-free. Sometimes you get a little bit over your skis and you start getting quarterback powers, which was the Cam Newton exercise. We saw it at Auburn for a Heisman Trophy, and then he was doing it so well with Carolina. Ultimately, they didn't use it in the Super Bowl, which is still curious to me. But at the end of the day, those guys are getting a lot of people in their ears going, hey, the money is in the second contract. You don't want to run so much. Vince Young, who was brilliant in college and needed his legs to be brilliant in the NFL, was telling Norm Chow, who was the coordinator at uh, Tennessee at the time, I don't want to run anymore. Well, that was coming from his agent, who needs him to be upright <laughs> so that he can ink the deal, which is the big money in the second And he deal. wasn't a good enough passer. No, no. You, those guys can't live, and I say those guys, the guys who, have, who, who find ways to impact defenses with both their arms and their legs aren't good enough to play against the coverages that exist when they know the legs aren't part of it. But when you see Brady now, we, we all see the greatest quarterback of all time. Right. But not everybody would have seen that at, at, in the embryonic stages here. So what, what is it about Brady that... He ultimate competitiveness. Ultimate competitiveness. Very, very acute... Uh, I, I mean, brilliant IQ for football in terms... And Manning would be in this company. I think Aaron Rodgers, as I watch him play. Rodgers has got the most beautiful arm talent you've ever seen. Uh, but they, what they do is they but get in that But did you pocket. see that when he was at Cal? You don't know it because it, most coaches in college don't allow you to do it. They, they just say, do my play, and then I'll send you another one. They don't let guys change out of plays. We are retarding the, uh, the development of quarterbacks at the collegiate level because we're doing it for them. Everything's up-tempo, fast pace. Get up to the line of scrimmage, look over, and I'll tell you where to go. You're never really gleaning anything from the defense, and if you don't know what's going on in that defense, you're behind the eight ball when you get to the NFL. The other thing, and I want to talk some college football. We'll take a break, and I want to have you uh, give us your latest DP show-related song. One thing I've noticed is the inability to develop offensive linemen to go into the NFL. 100%. The, the, the college game is not developing. So we're not talking about Nor these is the guys. high school game. The high school game's gone to the spread. I mean, the, the, the spread offense was developed because – Art Browse, when he was a high school coach and others similarly situated, looked around and said, I have no big guys. There's no guys, so we can't play that way, so we're going to play out on the edges. Get the wide receivers as close to the, uh, to the sidelines as they can if they go out with us. Now we've got a box that we can work in, and we'll be able to survive. But uh, there are not enough offensive linemen who know how to come out of a three-point stance, who know all the different fundamentals. I work with Randy Cross at, uh, at CBS as, as well as Aaron Taylor. These guys have a constant dialogue about – 
how bad the yeah. fundamentals are in the collegiate ranks, and it starts in the high school ranks. And so just as we talked about a halfway house for quarterbacks between the, the uh, collegiate level and professional level, I think offensive linemen need it as well. He's Rick Neuheisel. We'll come back. I'm going to ask him about these college quarterbacks, including uh, USC, UCLA. Who would he take right now if he had to make it? Or I'll let you have uh, Josh Allen from Wyoming. You're going to give me a, You want me to answer now? Or no, are we that's You're called teasing. a tease. That's, that's yeah, called I, a tease. I'm learning. I'm learning this business. Yeah, and you got your guitar with you. So uh, we'll come back. We'll talk some college football with Rick Neuheisel right after this. Born in the SEC. How about the checkerboards of Tennessee? We've even got our own USC. We bought the Aggies and Misery. Born in the SEC. Oh, uh, just a little in sampling there. Corner, we'll throw That's uh, Rick Neuheisel, of course. Uh, unplugged. Unplugged college. is right. One of his early hits. <laughs> Born in the SEC. And uh, CBS College Football analyst uh, joining us here in the Man Cave. Joining us courtesy of Continental Tire Coaches Corner. Uh, before we get to your guitar, Sam Darnold started off slow this year. Why? Well, the running game is not up to snuff. With the exception of the game against Stanford, where they had 200-yard backs and went for over 300 yards, which put, made everybody feel like SC was back because they struggled a little bit against Western Michigan. They were less than two yards a carry against uh, uh, Texas and less than four yards a carry against Cal, and Cal was like 127th in defense last year in the country. So uh, Justin Wilcox doing a nice job there. But Darnold needs a running game to go with him, and they're still fitting some new pieces in on that offensive line. He may have a little bit too much of an infatuation with Deontay Burnett, the, the all-everything receiver there, and that might be causing him to focus too much on him. Uh, but I, I don't worry about Sam Darnold. He has it. He, and there's things that you, you're not going to marvel at. When he gets to the combine, if you, and he just wears a number that doesn't say Darnold on the back, just the number of combine, you know, because your meat on the hoof there. Uh, his ball is not going to come off, and you're going to go, hi, oh, that guy's. But he has what you look for when it comes down to 45 seconds left and no timeouts to go down there and get you a field goal. There, there was a play in that game where he had to leap from the pocket yeah. and made the play. Yeah. I mean, that that's sensational stuff. He has it. Darnold will be uh, a big-time player. If you had to take a pick now, Darnold or Rosen? I'm leaning Rosen, and, and I didn't want to. I, I You know, Rosen, that's, that's not UCLA loyalty, is it? Well, no, no. It's, as a matter of fact, I wanted Rosen not to be good because my son was trying to win the job. <laughs> <laughs> I kept going, he isn't any of that. He isn't any of that. I mean, my son was trying to get the job, but I kept going, Jerry, he's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, son. He's got every throw. He, the, Rosen has every throw, and that comeback, uh, yeah, he got fortunate in trying to throw one away and it ended up being a touchdown. And a different guess, type yeah. of attitude than Darnold. He's the kind of guy, Dan, that... He wants to know why. You're going to tell me here's the progression, why? And if you're not equipped as a coach to answer it and answer it adequately so he understands it thoroughly, he's going to keep probing you, and that's going to wear some coaches out. But Rodgers has to be like that, too, with Green Bay. I'm gonna, he strikes me as... You know, I, I don't know Aaron well enough to know that, but clearly he's very cerebral. And But remember this, he also got to sit behind a guy who was going to do it in a... <laughs> myriad of ways. Brett Favre was anything but, uh, you know, by the book. And so he probably sat there and goes, well, why aren't you doing it this way? There was probably a lot of, when I get this job, here's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. And he's been brilliant. But I think Rosen has the real stuff. I know there are going to be people that are going to be hands off because of his personality and he's flamboyant and how important is football to him, right? He was a tennis kid and, and all that. But I think based on the way he's performed and the, his ability to whip it around the yard and put it wherever he wants to, I think he's going to be really good. What about Allen at Wyoming? I think it's unfair to Josh Allen because we put him so quickly in the Carson Wentz category. Same coaching staff, Craig Bowl going to be coaching yeah. it. And, and when you see a unicorn, you know there's another one, right? They, and so I think people jumped on that bandwagon a little too soon. I would hope, from my perspective, that Josh Allen would stay one more year and seasoned just a little more. Certainly got the body, you know, like the old uh, Brady Bunch, Johnny Bravo. He fit the suit. <laughs> yeah. He fits the suit. But uh, but I, I would say that he needs just a little bit more seasoning as we notice him. Two Power Five games, Iowa and Oregon, not very Didn't impressive. look good. Yeah. Uh, with what's going on with basketball, with recruiting scandal there, wow. uh, I know it's, it's easier 
to, because of the shoe companies, to get a kid, pay a kid. And you only need one kid to change your franchise. You know, you can't do the same in football, although you can go after. Cleeks aren't the same no. marketplace. Hey. Give me give me the recruiting story. You don't have to name names, but give me the recruiting story to let the audience know I got, how crazy this is. I happened. got this from firsthand. You know, when I got fired at the University of Washington, I went and worked at Rainier Beach High School. And one of the kids on our team uh, was a basketball savant, you know. And one day he asked for a ride home from practice. So I said, sure. So he jumps in the car. And I said, where is it? I, I'm figuring it's got to be a mile, two miles away. High school, right? 40 miles later, I got him home. And in that 40 miles, I asked him, how in the heck did you end up at Rainier Beach? And I got the long story of the AAU, the coaches leading, leading him, Funnel him, funneling to this AAU team, funneling him to this particular place, telling him where he's going to go to college. He'd, he was already committed at that time to a major university. And... There was a lot of influence and a lot of people along the way. And I'm not going to get into what the numbers were, but clearly hands in the pot. Was and, he getting paid? Uh, I didn't get there. I didn't, I didn't really want to know. Uh, but clearly, there was an incentive for him to go 40 miles to, to go to high school and to play on this AAU team and but so didn't, forth. But did he play football? He, he played ended football. Up, he ended up being a football player. I kept trying to tell him, you're going to be an unbelievable outside linebacker, and I still believe to this day that he would have been. But the basketball thing was already done. And the, matter of fact, he tweaked his ankle the next week and was told by the head coach in college basketball, no more football. He was told, no uncertain terms. There had to be some reason, some... Some mm. some uh, mm. leverage to mm. get that thing done because he loved football. All right, get your guitar ready. Yes, sir. Uh, Rick Neuheisel, CBS College Football Studio Analyst, song singer songwriter. He's sort of our resident James Taylor here. <laughs> What's your inspiration with this song? Well, the country. Uh, it's since, a great since, country. Since since uh, I've been away, since we haven't had songs. I mean, what the heck's going on around I, here? I right? don't know. And I blame you. Bring us all together. I, I think I think that uh, you needed me here. Bring I mean, us all together, Rick. Here with we go. Apologies to the great Dolly Parton. Mm, underrated. DP, 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 DP. Look at all that's happened since I'm gone. DP, 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 DP. More than ever now, you need my song. Oh, sure, it started as just funny with songs like Born in the SEC, but now I realize it's so much more. Since I've been gone, all hell's broke loose from White House visits to freeing the juice. It's time we get the order restored. Presidential tweets a bad idea. Ask the NFL in North Korea, and the FBI is posting on the block. Those charged will sing like golden birds. The shoe companies will be undeterred, and Coach Patino will weigh in that he's shocked. <laughs> DP, 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 DP. This is supposed to be football's time of year. DP, 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 DP. How soon can we get this all in the rearview mirror? The national anthem is center stage. Who stands, who kneels is all the rage. In constant dialogue, who's right and wrong? For those who've taken a history test, our country was founded on protest. Keep it peaceful and let's <laughs> learn to get along. <laughs> If you're thinking that you're just too tired with a president who says you're fired, think of images <laughs> so recently. Folks helping folks after hurricane winds without a care of the color of their skin, for that is who we truly want to be. Come on, DP. DP, 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 DP. You and I can help but fix what's wrong. DP, 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 We just need someone with talent to sing the song. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. We just need someone with talent to sing this song. Once again, once again. He's, That's all I got, man. He's back and better than ever.
It's great to see you, man. Always a blast. Thank Always you, Rick. Always a blast. Thank, Thank you. you. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.